This was captured on the Sony A6700. Hey everyone, welcome to Ultimate Tutorials. My name is Victor Melcher from Moment, and today we have the Sony A6700 with us. In this video, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the Sony A6700 and show you how to get started using this camera right out of the box. So, let's get into it. Now the Sony a6700 is the first new camera to be added to the a6000 line in four years. It features a 26 megapixel back illuminated sensor, so you can expect to get great detail out of your stills for photography, and you can also shoot in 4K 4 to 2 10-bit color at 120 frames per second. It also now features a flip-out screen, which can help a ton for content creators and photographers wanting to get a variety of angles to shoot from. And this camera was designed with hybrid shooters in mind, so it takes both photos and videos incredibly well. So the first things you'll need to know about before shooting right out of the box are batteries and SD cards. The Sony a6700 comes with a NPF Z100 battery, which these are actually the same batteries that you'll find in the a7 and also the FX lineup. So if you own an a7 III and up, say an a7 Mark IV, a Sony FX3 or FX30, then the batteries you already have will be compatible with the a6700. Now the Sony a6700 features a single SD card slot on the left of the camera and it accepts SDXC cards both UHS-1 and UHS-2. Now if you do want to take full advantage of this camera and shoot in the high frame rates like 4K 120 and the SNQ modes, then Sony recommends shooting in a V60 speed or higher SD card. And my SD card of choice is the OWC Atlas Ultra V90 card. It's super fast and it's one of the most affordable V90 cards out there. So first thing you want to do when taking photos is switch to the photo icon on the dial below the mode dial. Now using the touch screen, you can adjust your main functions like your shutter speed, aperture, and your ISO, but if you do want to use some of the physical buttons, you totally can. The front command dial will control the aperture. The rear command dial will control your shutter speed. And then if you do want to adjust your ISO, you'll just hit this little ISO tab and you can adjust accordingly. One thing that's really helpful that Sony added is a swipe and touch menu. For example, this top button will actually snap a photo for you. The red dot will record. The person icon will show you the recognition target. So say if you wanna focus on human, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, you can set the recognition target and that's what it will focus on. You can adjust the touch function. So you can do touch focus, touch tracking, touch screen, touch shutter. So if you just tap the screen, it'll take a photo, touch automatic exposure, or you can just turn the touch function off. On the bottom left corner is your playback. And again, you have your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO, and you can just easily adjust those with a touch of a finger. On the bottom right corner, you can adjust your creative look, you can adjust the white balance, the focus area, and the drive mode. You can do all of that just on the touch menu. So again, the first thing you wanna do is switch the little dial to the video icon. And as you can see, the touch menu has also changed to have video focus functions now. So at the top, we have the record button. We have the soft skin effect. We have the recognition target, which it does disable the soft skin effect if you go to animals, because obviously animals, you can't really soften their skin. We have the touch function, which I like to leave it on touch tracking, just so I can tap and have it automatically focus on a subject. And to cancel, all you have to do is hit that little X. We have the playback. On the bottom, you have your shutter, aperture, ISO, and your white balance. On the top, you have the self timer mode. You have your focus mode, so you can adjust between manual and autofocus. You have your picture profiles. So if you did want to jump to a cine tone and shoot there, it would be PP11. And lastly, you have your creative looks. So if you don't want to shoot an S-Log3, you can just switch between these looks. And then on the bottom, you can adjust the contrast, highlights, and more. And if you hit the function button on the back of the camera, you'll see more settings pop up. And one new setting that I do want to bring up is that the image stabilization now has active mode. So standard image stabilization will help you if you're out shooting handheld footage, but say if you're trying to do a tracking shot, you forgot your gimbal, but you still want to get a nice smooth motion, you can just switch to the active mode. What this is going to do is crop in on the sensor a little bit, but it's going to stabilize your footage even more than the standard image stabilization. One more set of menus I want to show you for shooting video are main menu one and main menu two. And you can get to those by hitting the menu button on the back of the camera and going down to the little house icon and you can see main menu one and main menu two. Here in main menu one, you can adjust your frame rates. So if you do want to go and shoot 4K 120, you totally can. Two other important settings that you'll want to go down and adjust are the file format and also the record setting. So the file format, this is where you can adjust if you wanna shoot in 4K, HD, or one of the more or less compressed 4K formats. I prefer to stick to XAVC S4K. 
Another one is the record setting. So you'll want to click this and by default it will be in 8-bit, but you'll want to switch to 422 10-bit because this will give you the most color depth out of your footage. Next is main menu 2. And this is really important if you want to shoot in S-Log 3. So you'll want to go to log shooting setting, turn log shooting on, and now you can shoot in S-Log 3. If you are shooting in S-Log 3, the first thing that you'll notice is that your screen is incredibly desaturated and gray. And that's because you're shooting in S-Log, this is the most desaturated profile. You'll want to shoot in this if you plan on color grading your footage in post. But you don't have to make yourself suffer and look at a super desaturated screen. There is one more setting you'll need to change in main menu 1, and I will show you that right now. So we will click the little menu button one more time, and now under main menu 1, you can go down to S-Log 3, this says select LUT. So now you're shooting in S-Log 3, this is what it naturally looks like, and all you have to do is switch to S-709. And it's not actually going to change your raw out of camera footage when you shoot in S-Log 3, all it's going to do is give you a preview in the monitor, so you can get a better idea of what your footage will look like after you color grade it. Now if you want to shoot in S and Q mode, which stands for slow and quick, or time lapses, the first step you'll have to do again is switch that little dial to S and Q. And if you do select S and Q, you can go into the menu again, and you will go under image quality, and then you will see S and Q settings, click that, and now under frame rate settings, you can pretty much adjust how slow you want it to be. And once you selected that, you can go down to the record setting, and always make sure you're shooting in 422 10-bit just to get the most color out of your footage. Now say you're done shooting in S and Q mode and you want to switch to time lapse, all you have to do is bring that swipe on screen and then that little M at the top, you can click that and now you can switch to time lapse. And to adjust your time lapse settings, you will just go to the menu and right under S and Q settings is time lapse settings. Here you can do your frame rate settings so you can shoot at whatever interval time at whatever frame rate. And again, I always recommend shooting in 422 10-bit. All right, and lastly, another accessory that Sony released along with the A6700 is the ECM M1. And this little mic has four different microphones on top and eight different record modes depending on what type of audio you need. It has ultra directional, which this is only gonna pick up sound from the front and it's gonna work to suppress any unwanted sound from any other directions. We have stereo, which this will pretty much pick up realistic positioning from the left and right channel. You have a super directional front and rear separate. So this will pick up audio from the front on channel one and then audio from the rear on channel two. Or if you wanna have it both on the same channel, you can just switch it to the super directional front and rear. Super directional rear, if say you just want to narrate your footage as you're shooting. Omnidirectional will pick up sound equally from all directions. Unidirectional, which this can be great for recording conferences and meetings, say if there's multiple speakers. And then super directional. Super directional is pretty similar to ultra directional. It's just gonna capture a slightly wider field of sound. And lastly, it does come with this cool windscreen if you're filming outdoors in windy areas. And no wires or batteries necessary, all you have to do is connect this to your cold shoe mount and you're good to start shooting. Alright everyone, so that is it for your quick start guide using the Sony a6700. If you do have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And if you do want to see more quick start guides, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.